So Crota's End has come to Destiny 2, and not with a whimper, but with a bang. This is a more difficult raid than I think a lot of people anticipate. In this guide, I will go over the first encounter, the Abyss encounter, which in Destiny 1 was something that I could solo, but you cannot do that in Destiny 2. First off, this takes you to the Hellmouth, just like in Destiny 1, but in this case, the Chalice of Light you get at the very beginning. You pick that up, and you'll notice that your bar is building with that. And you can increase the speed of that bar generating by killing enemies. Once that completes, and it's completely full, you'll need someone to take that off of you. When they take it off of you, they will get the chalice. At that point, it will continue to grow on them, and you will get an enlightenment buff. Use that to start building the bridge. When enough people have done that, where they pass the chalice around, they got enlightenment, and they've actually put that in into the plate, they will see the bridge build, and you can go down to the abyss. Once you start keep moving through this encounter, you'll see two debuffs that show up on you. One is engulfed in darkness, and one is weight of darkness. Weight of darkness goes from 0 to 10, and as it goes up, you'll see your abilities to sprint, to jump, and things reduced. And that'll make it more difficult to deal with the enemies. You can get over this by running an arc subclass and becoming amplified, and other things like using Eager Edge. The other thing is this Engulfed in Darkness. This Engulfed in Darkness counts down from 60 seconds. When it's finished and gets to zero, the entire fire team wipes, so you will need to reset that over time. To reset that, there's a couple mechanics that go into this, and this will be repeated throughout the raid. What you will do is you will pick up the chalice, just like you did above. The chalice will count down until it gets completely full. When it's completely full, you'll see that you'll be engulfed with light with a 10 second counter. You need to have someone take the chalice from you within that 10 seconds or you will die. Once that's complete and they take that, you will have an enlightenment buff on you. You can take that enlightenment buff and actually put that into the lamp to start the lamp up. The lamp will start glowing and it will slowly take your stacks of weight of darkness down. Now, one thing to keep in mind, just like in Destiny 1, over time, you need to start moving because that lamp will actually explode and kill the entire fire team. So what I typically do when I do that is I will go and probably get, wait till the, my weight of darkness is down to two or three because then I know I have a little bit of buffer to start running to the next lamp and I'll start moving at that point. And obviously, you just keep going through the lamps. The lamps will either be in front of you, right or left, and never backwards. And you'll keep going through these because you're trying to make your way through this maze. Probably about at every four or five lamps, you'll actually notice that no lamps past that are lit up. That's because you actually have to persist the chalice to be able to light the next section of lamps. So to do that, someone who has the chalice will go over. Usually what we do is we have someone finish up, they get their enlightenment, the person with the um, enlightenment puts that into the lamp to get the lamp started, and then the person just got the chalice We'll go over to these little areas that are right beside the lamps. You'll see one, an example of one here. They'll put their chalice in, and then someone else will pick up the chalice to run it to the next lamp. Now, one of the things that can be really tricky this encounter is making sure people know when to pick the chalice up and when not to. So here's some advice on what we did. We stuck the very simple terms so people understood what we were saying. So first off, if you were, com and you could do whatever you want on your fire team, but what we did is on our fire team, when we were completely done with a chalice, we would say we were charged. That would tell the next person to pick up the chalice from us. The other thing we did is we would start calling out ahead of time. So as soon as we exchange, it would say, who's got next? That way, we make sure when we get to the next area, there's no confusion about who should be picking it up and who shouldn't be. Because the other thing that happens is, when you take a chalice and you do the enlightenment and you put it into the lamp, you actually have a debuff on you that perfects you, it's called Drain of Light, that prevents you from picking up a chalice for a period of time. So you will have to make sure it can't be anyone that picks it up. The other thing is you don't want to continually pick up one from someone who maybe is in the process trying to, to ramp it up so they can light and put it into a lamp. So that's why I think it's really important to be able to say who's got next and be very clear about the terms you're using because you could say, I'm charged or I'm full of charge or you can say a bunch of different things but if you're not careful people misinterpret what you're saying and they'll take your chalice before it's done and that could lead to issues and timing going through this encounter and that's basically it you keep doing that keep going through all the lamps at the end you're going to find that you're at a plate and at that plate you will have to put in enlighten again to build the bridge while you're doing that there'll be some unstoppable champions that show up there'll be some ogres and witches again just make sure you have weapons that can deal with them deal with the ads that you have in place, then you're done. At that point, you can go and run into the light and you're making it to the next encounter. That's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.